If you're going to Bali and you're looking to extend your tourist visa, then this video is for you. I'm going to walk you through how we used an agency to help us do this to make sure that we did everything correctly and what the entire process was. Without further ado, let's get stuck into the video. A couple of things to note. We arrived in Bali on New Zealand passports. We arrived on the 22nd of November 2022. When we arrived, we arrived on e-visas. So I will put a link in the description below on the e-visa process in case you are interested in doing it that way rather than lining up for the visa on arrival when you arrive at the airport. It's just much faster. The other thing you need to note is that the e-visa allows us 30 days entry into Indonesia with the right to extend for another 30 days. So that was always our intention when we arrived, that we would extend it for another 30 days and that's exactly what we did. So let me walk you through that process and what it looked like. When I looked into the renewal process, I needed to find out who could do it for me. And so I asked in an expat Facebook group who people would recommend and Bali Legals came up. So I checked out their Facebook page and I checked out their Instagram page and they also have a YouTube channel. And I reached out to them and asked them what needed to happen. They sent me an online form to fill in, which I filled in, and then they gave me options on what I wanted to do. I could either drop the passports into their office or I could get them to pick up the passports from me. Given that we were traveling all over Bali, I thought it was just easier if they picked up the passports from me. And so I paid an extra 100 rupiah to do that and they sent somebody from their office in Denpasar to Ubud where I was to pick up all four passports because we were renewing them for the whole family. The prices are the same if you're renewing them for adults or children and so they gave me a price to extend all of us and I just paid that when the person came to pick up the passports. When the person came to pick up the passports, I shot this video explaining what the process was. So I'm here with G'day, and um, he is from Bali Legals. Hi. Hi. And um, he's just come to our villa to help us renew our tourist visas. So we, when we landed, we got a 30-day tourist visa, and um, Bali Legals is based in Denpasar, right? Yeah. Yeah? And, um, and we are in Ubud, and so G'day has come all the way to see us in Ubud today to pick up our passports and renew them for us. And I just paid online with your EFPOS machine, right? Yeah. And then what will happen after today? Uh, go back to office mm -hmm. and we prepare uh, about the requirement yeah. and submit your passport today. Okay, uh, good. And then you... you waiting for the invitation photo and photo and fingerprint yeah yeah because we have to get fingerprints yeah. done yeah after that you can go and how to... how long does that take usually is uh five eight seven until ten days seven working ten day days, yeah? yeah working days okay. yeah yeah without uh, Any Saturday. Holidays, yeah, 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 yeah 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 okay. and then you you guys let us know when we can get our fingerprints done yeah and then we have to travel to Denpasar. Yep. So everyone has to travel to Denpasar to get their fingerprints done because they have to have it in person and then have their photo taken, right? Yep. And right. then after that we wait. We wait, you, you wait, mm -hmm. yeah, until the passport is ready. Yeah. And then you can pick up your passport in our office or we can send your passport to your place. Yes, okay, that's very mm -hmm. handy. So if you guys want to get your visas renewed and you don't want to go into Denpasar and, and do all the paperwork because I think it would be two visits wouldn't it? Yeah. If you if I did it myself yeah I would have to go twice because I have to drop off the paperwork uh, and then maybe yeah like uh, two times yeah yeah but this way I only have to go once yeah. which is good yeah. because we've got tourist things to do just, just go to immigration office yeah take photo and take a friend it's done. And can you tell us a little bit more about um, how you have to dress when you go into the immigration office? Because, like right now, I've got this top on, but I can't, yeah. I can't wear that. Yeah. To go into the immigration. You can, you can enter the immigration office with like that. No. Uh, you can wearing casual. Yes. And wearing shoes. So shoes yeah. and a nice top that yeah. that covers your shoulders. Right. Right. 
And I have to, no shorts, so I have to wear like a dress or? Uh, like a, a dress, no. No? Not, not possible, like a dress. Can't wear a dress? Yeah. Do I have to wear a sarong? Like a, a thing to cover my legs? Yeah, yeah. I have to, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I could get like one from the market, right? Yeah. And just wear <laughs> no, that? No, no, no. no. Have to have a nice one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you have to have closed toe shoes and a nice, some nice clothes to wear for immigration. One thing I just want to clarify here about the clothing and the dress code is that you're not supposed to have exposed shoulders. So ladies, you have to have your shoulders covered. So yes, you can wear a short sleeve top, but not sleeveless. Having said that, we did see people in there with shoestring like spaghetti type strap tops, and they were allowed in. The thing about wearing a dress is you just have to have your legs covered so anything that covers your knees, now that can be pants, that can be a long skirt, that can be a dress, it can be a sarong. It doesn't have to be a sarong but it just has to cover your knees. So make sure that you cover your shoulders and that you have sleeves and that you have something that covers your knees and that can be long shorts. So it doesn't have to be a dress or a skirt, it could just be shorts or something that covers your knees or pants. In terms of the shoes, it doesn't have to be closed toe shoes. We did see people in there wearing jandals or slides, but just to be safe, I did wear closed toe shoes, just some flat shoes, and I wore a dress, and I had a cardigan that I cover up my sleeves if I wanted to, if I needed to, but I didn't need to. So while they do say that the dress code is strict, we did see some people who were not adhering to the dress code, and they were still let in. But just to be on the safe side, just dress formally. And how long can it take to do the fingerprinting? From today, uh, usually it is uh, three days. Three days. From now. And then after the fingerprinting we wait? Five days, your passport is ready. Yay, yeah. okay. So, they, so Bali Legals will either send it to me or um, I can go and pick it up from Dempazar. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah, all right. Good, yeah. yeah, so it's a really good service. If you want to get your passport renewed and not have to go into the office twice, just get Bali Legals to do it. I'll just add a description below so that you guys can see a link for their website, but it's really super fast and very helpful and, um, and affordable too. Okay, awesome. Thank you, good day. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for the video. Okay, all right. Okay, bye bye. Thank you, Jenna Cassie. Now, you're probably wondering what we paid for this service. It cost us 3,600,000 Indonesian rupiah. To renew your passport if you do it yourself, I looked at the prices when we were at immigration, and what we saw was 500,000 per person. So that would have been 2 million Indonesian rupiah for us. But honestly, for the stress, it just wasn't worth it. So that's why we got Bali Legals to do it for us. They managed the whole thing. I didn't have to worry about whether I was doing anything wrong when we were renewing our passports and they just made the whole process super easy. Now it can be a little bit daunting handing over your passport to somebody, but because they had been recommended in a Facebook group and lots of people had used them and I had checked them out online, they are a legit business and they provide an amazing service. So you fill in the paperwork online, they came to pick it up from my villa in Ubud, I handed over my passports, made the payment and then I waited for them to let me know when immigration wanted us to go in and have our fingerprints done and to have our photos taken. And within a week of handing my passports to them, they contacted me and said that it was time for us to go in. We agreed the appointment time and they confirmed that with immigration and then we went in and got our photos done and our fingerprints taken. And this is what it looked like at immigration. So this is the main entrance when you come through the driveway and you're gonna follow those yellow lines down towards the back. This is the front of the building and this is the right hand side. You're not gonna go in there, you're gonna go down, follow those colored lines right down to the back until you get to here. This is the main building and this is where they will let you in. You go through that door on the right and just follow the signs and they'll show you exactly what you need to do. The other thing that was a really nice touch was that someone from Bali Legals was there to help us to make sure that we knew exactly what to do. So she met us outside. She couldn't come inside with us, but she could show us which way to go and to point us towards the right counter. So she did that when we arrived. I had her WhatsApp details and she had mine. We connected and then she just showed us what to do. 
She even gave us some masks because we didn't realize that we needed to wear masks to go into the building. So she gave us some masks to make sure that we could get in okay. So they work on a ticketing system. So once you go through, you hand in your paperwork that Bali Legals gives you at the counter that they direct you to, and then they give you a ticket. And then you sit down and wait with your ticket, like I am here with Paul, and you wait for them to call you up. Now, we were a party of four, two adults and two children. They called us up individually. So that meant that Jasmine, who was only 13, ended up going to get her fingerprints done and her photo taken by herself, which, which she was a little bit nervous about. But here you can see in the photo, she's actually in the same room with Paul at the same time. So it wasn't so bad. After that, when all of us were fingerprinted and had our photographs taken, we could go and we just waited for Bali Legals to let us know when our visas had been approved and that they had them back in their hands ready to deliver them back to us. And this is what happened five days later. I've just been told that our passports are ready and that the guy is downstairs waiting for me to meet him to pick them up. So let's go. So what I'm doing here is just asking for clarification on the actual visas themselves and what the dates were and just making sure that I had them all correctly stamped for every single person in our party. So was that an easy process? Yeah, it was awesome. Super fast and um, delivered to your door. So that was a super easy process and I highly recommend it. This video is not endorsed by Bali Legals. I'm just sharing this video so that other people can learn how to do it. So if you have any questions, just put them in the comments below and I'll try and answer them as best as I can. Otherwise, in the description, there'll be a link for Bali Legals. Just reach out to them. And if you want to get a visa extended, feel free to just get in touch with them and get it done with confidence. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.